Tom. Hello everybody, Tom Fox here. Welcome back to more Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. In the last episode, we went into the Iron Whale and got ourselves a new recruit in Treasure Knight. In this episode, however, the episode, this episode, however, we are going straight into it because there's nothing else to really faff about with. We're going straight into the Clockwork Tower to take down Tinker Knight. You sure you want to go into the Clockwork Tower, underling? Stop calling me underling. You're newer than I am. I've got seniority. All right. As you can see, we start off in a new pose thanks to the, uh, the new clothing we got. Blight the Earth! Right off the bat, just this music alone, I'm getting some serious, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, like, arcade vibes. Well, maybe not arcade, but, like, the old... The, the first TMNT game. The arcade one was technically the second one in the series. I know my NES lore! No. Anyway, first, uh, first Red Skull, super easy to get. Even if you fall, you don't die, you just end up back down the place where you were before. <clears throat> one of the advantages of, uh, of, of uh, games that, like, do that. Here we're introduced to a new mechanic. We got these mages that are shooting gears. Hit it with your scythe, it floats, and you can use that as a boost up. I do also like how, like, uh, in every level, there's, like, some reason why you can't cling onto certain walls. This one probably is my favorite one, where, like, the because it's, like, a, a mechanical tower, the walls are covered in grease. Or, like, oil or grease, and that's the reason why you can't climb up them. Speaking of climbing up, uh, you can see that we've got these pressure-activated elevators where if one, one goes down, the other one goes up. Uh, by doing this, it is rather easy to uh, get around. You can also wall run up them. Ag! Ooh, I didn't even mean to do that. I actually accident. I accidentally did. Uh, pardon me. <clears throat> I accidentally hit that one when it was in the uh, when it was falling. Not when I had hit it in the air. Sorry, I just got so excited over that I got choked up. Blah. Get up here. Get our second red skull. Using that switch to press it down just long enough for us to jump over there, climb this thing, and grab it. Let's continue onward. Uh, we see that there are these uh, single block, uh, or single, I'm gonna call them square. Yeah, like, yeah, square works. Uh, single square holes that only the uh, the gears can fall down. So we're gonna be careful with those. Uh, got up there just in time, phew. Rotten carrot. Sometimes it's an, uh, an apple in there. For my practice file, I know it could be an apple. It could also be a bomb. Uh, that I found it the hard way on my practice file, because I had to, I played th through this part portion of it multiple times, because I kept dying. And, oh boy, you will see why I kept dying. Well, maybe not this portion of the level. Maybe a little bit later. Anyway, while well, climbing up here with these, uh... I, think, I don't really know. These these walls, these these appearing and disappearing walls. You can get through two of them pretty easily, but you, I feel like you have to be a little bit more confident in your skills than I am to get through all three of those in one go. Whoa, almost walked into there blindly. Right across here, get ourselves our third red skull. These are actually relatively easy to get. And there are a couple you can miss without even knowing it. I'll show you those when I get to them. Wall climb up here, wait for that to come down, and then you jump up there, get up this ladder. We're introduced to a new enemy here. These chameleons. These mechanical chameleons will uh, constantly be going up and down on the, or up and down or left and right on the wall. They take around three hits to kill. So you can get those out of the way, you're all good. Hit open the dirt block, get yourself some uh, rotten chicken, open this up, and you get yourself a treasure chest. Neat treasure chest right there. I do like also how different each of the areas looks between uh, this and say Shovel of Hope and uh, Plague of Shadows. So like each one has will have like a beginning part. Maybe not like terribly different, different like the backgrounds mostly. Because I don't seem to recall, I don't know, it's been a while since I played Shovel of Hope. It hasn't really been that long since I played Plague of Shadow, but I don't really remember like seeing, being able to see the sky like this as it is. Uh, when you're, when you're inside the Clockwork Tower, it's mostly closed off. Also, I think somebody on this wall is calling for help. Just saying. You jump up here, you can break those to get two pink diamonds. You go over to the left, though. And now we are, uh, stuck. Well, not really stuck, but we got more of these, uh, chameleons here. They look like they're wearing, like, turtleneck sweaters. Because of the, the black bits underneath. Whoops! There you go, slash at those real quick. Boop. Boop. Ah, oh, boop! 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 Oh, I panicked.
All right, and we're back over here. Might as well go through the entire... There is an easier way to do this with uh, the current power-ups that I have, but I'd rather not. I'd rather show that when I'm done with this. You can use this if you want. I prefer doing it the way without without curios. And I just sort of spoiled that, you, that it's with a curio that you do this. Anyway, just kill those two chameleons, climb up here, and you get yourself a darkness wisp. Expanded darkness is always good. However, what you can do is if you come down here, jump, hit A with the plume. You can float up here, no problem, just to grab that and go. Like I said, I'd rather do it the, uh, the, the way that, the, more or less the intended way. I mean, I guess both ways are intended. If you have the, ooh, big gears. If you, uh, if you have the, the hover plume, then you're good. I don't think there are any secrets in this room, so I'm gonna keep going. There are secrets here, though. I wanna do is wait for the gears to go by, drop down, and go up! Grab yourself this red skull. Look how happy, uh, Specter Knight is from that. Whoa! What did I hit? Was it one of the gears? Jeez, that was scary. All right, down, up. I did it again! Ah, uh, how do I keep doing that? What do I keep hitting? There we go, good God. Oh no, okay, I probably should have just waited there first. Now we can get up. There, oh, wait, 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 I'm missing something here. Wouldn't, wouldn't fancy myself much of a treasure hunter if I didn't think of that. Get myself some treasure. Come back over here. Well, not really back. And here we see our first auto scroller po portion. I'm surprised it took this long. Now you can see these chameleons are walking around, and when they get track of me, they will start moving. Uh, they will start moving then. Uh, there is something rather funny you could do with this, and it all depends on my timing. There. Oh nope. There we go. See you later. He's dead, he's gone, and here we have a slew of fairies. This is my least favorite enemy. Well, this isn't my least favorite enemy in Inspector of Torment. It's my least favorite enemy in Shovel of Hope. Because, oh my god, they're so annoying. You have a much bigger attack radius with Spectre Knight than you did with, uh, with Shovel Knight. Get that going. Stoke the fires, as it will. By which I mean I'm stoking the fires when I... You get the joke. Uh, that's the joke. Nothing like a comedian who explains all of his jokes, right? Just jokes and jokes and jokes. Come down here, split that open, get ourselves a pink diamond for busting that open. And we good. Uh, again, this is another, those, another one of those things you could use the plume, uh, the hover plume to get to. Like I said, rather do things there. I guess their intended route. Just to show that, like, how it can be done and that it can be done. Not too difficult to get through some of these. Some of them are a little bit more difficult than others, but you know, I just like doing things the right, the uh, like the way that you were that you would have done it if you didn't have the uh, the the curios, which I guess would, goes to show how I do some of the boss battles as well. Also, don't get confused there. Don't go the wrong way like I did. Just drop down here and you'll be fine. So we can get into these. You got yourself another one of these knights here. They go in for an attacks every now and then. Uh, they also block you from above, but you're not going to be jumping that much in this area with these giant gears here. Uh, now if we wait... Jump onto this... And then that'll go down, you can use... You, what you... What you can... Bleh, what you do then is you use the, uh... Uh, piston there to get back up, but if we go over here... There is raw... There is a dead chicken, not raw chicken. If it was raw chicken, then it would be a live chicken. Well, kind of a live chicken. I'm just going to stop there. We can go on the, the whole basis of what's a live chicken and what's dead chicken later. Post... Post Thanksgiving turkey is what we'll call that one. Because it's clearly been eaten already. Uh... I... Okay, so... Here we have another instance of... Or here we have an instance of a split path, which is another first for Spectre of Torment at the very least. Uh, split paths have appeared in both Plague of Shadows and Shovel of Hope because they generally use the same uh, level design. So if we hit this... These uh, platforms actually collapse back in, so you want to be quick about this, that way you can get that. Now, I can't get back over there, but there's this pathway leading over here. There are three skulls left. So what we want to do is go over here. We can jump up here to get this pink diamond, and also break this open and get another red skull. Good on me for remembering that. Pats in the back, pats in the back. Don't get, don't hurt yourself patting yourself in the back, though, because it's bad. Uh, hurry up and get, you want to hurry up as fast as you can to get up there, otherwise you got to go back. Another red skull, but we can't reach it by jumping. We can get it by the plume, uh, by the hover plume. But what you're intended to do is do this. Get this gear coming over to you. 
hit it into the air, and then bash into it to get the, uh, the, 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 uh, the skull. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and get this, uh, this chest here first before I do anything else. It is ab uh, absolutely impossible to get to where that mage is, so you can't kill him even if you wanted to. The whole point of that mage is to get you a boost to the top there and to get that red skull. So, what you actually want to do here is once I get through, hit this once, and then that'll cause that platform to rise and the, the gear will get stuck there. With that gear stuck there, you can then hit it into the air and then boost up to this area here. Now you can see there are two paths here, one ladder leading down, the other one going up. If we go down this ladder here, we can see we're back in that room with the two uh, retractable platforms and that uh, that initial red skull that was right underneath where Spectre Knight was where I was just talking there. Good good speech, Tom, you're great. You did it. You you can, words good. And we just kill this guy, come up here. Very, very simple basic stuff, at least for, for like, this game. Like I said, like, as, as, like, seen with other, of all these other games, or with all these other, like, night games, like, Shovel Knight games, uh, they mostly revolve around, like, single screen, uh, obstacle courses with, like, a couple of variants here and there. Some variants include, like, the auto-scrolling sections. Oh, you know what? That wasn't the first auto-scrolling section, because the first auto-scrolling section was against the, uh, the anglerfish in, uh, in the Iron Whale. Or, like, there's some... There are other sections that... that speaking of auto-scrolling sections, but there are other sections that aren't just, like, single-screen uh, obstacle courses. I do like that format, though. I feel like it's a, lo a lost art, if you will. The single-screen obstacle course sort of level. I kind of wonder, like, what this game would be like if it played more like, say, Super Metroid, where it was... It wasn't single-screen obstacle courses, but rather it scrolled... It more or less, like, scrolled, uh, with you, like, wherever you went, as opposed to, like, you went one screen, scrolled over to the next, went one screen, it just was always scrolling to where it was gonna go next. I wonder what, like, the kind of dynamics that would change of that as well, both from a designer perspective and at what we know of it, uh, now changing with the, uh, the, the scrolling aspect. Like, would certain areas be broken because some areas are, are scrolling? Uh, anyway, we got that last, uh, red skull there. We got the darkness file. I'm sorry, the darkness, uh, wisp. And here we are in the last room before the boss. How do I know it's the last room before the boss? Well, no enemies. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be meat somewhere around here and there's a checkpoint, so... Well, most checkpoint rooms don't really have enemies, like, sitting on top of them. Red diamond there! Remember that, because that means it's the second highest difficulty an area can be! My practice run through of that didn't know that. What are you, some kind of ghost? Get out of my shop! I have work to do! The Enchantress like a word. We have an army to raise, and talented engineers are in short supply. Ha! Huh, you may be a tool, but I am not. You may be a tool, but I am not. Time to make a short work of you. And I think I realized something here from some of these boss battles. I believe all of them are using relics for in the Shovel Knight campaign. We saw that, uh, that, uh... What knight was he? Treasure Knight was using, uh coins against us, like the fortune coin. We can see that he, uh, Tinker Knight here is using the the mobile gear against us. It wouldn't be surprising if other knights were using various other uh, gadgets against us like we see in Shovel Knight. Probably not using any of the arcana from uh, from Plague of Shadows. Or for that matter, any of the uh, any of the curios that we see here in uh, Spectre Knight. We've actually already seen a, uh, uh, if you, we played through Plague of Shadows, we've already seen a connection to another, uh, oh, that was cheap hit. A connection to a relic and another, um, and a character from Shovel Knight. And we're playing as him now. When, um, when Plague of Shadows, after the, uh, post-game, you see, like, where all the knights ended up after that game? Or, like, where, like, some of the characters ended up? It shows, it shows Spectre Knight, uh, having, um, been, not really, like, ousted. But it shows, uh, Spectre Knight having been, like, robbed of his, uh, of his treasure, which was the, uh, phase locket. Uh, very good idea for this boss battle to use the, uh, boomerang sides. Because every time you get three to four damage off on him, he'll shift back to, or he'll shift forward or back. It's, if he's in front of you, it takes three hits for him to shift back. If he's in, uh, behind you, it takes four hits to shift him forward. And that's a cycle that keeps going until the end of the battle. Every time he shifts back forward, he gets a, uh, different power-up. Also, I missed him with the, with the, uh, boomerang sight there. I try not to do these using relics, because I prefer to do them basically of just using, like, the, that it's, you know, showing, like I said before, showing that it can be done without using the relics. 
And I think we're on the second to last phase of this fight here. Well, not second to last phase, but this is the technically the last phase because the uh, the bouncing balls are spawning. In the last phase before that, the missile spawned. Oh, this might this is the last phase actually. But the uh, missile spawned before that, and in the first phase, nothing was really spawning, and we were just being chased by it. Uh, fun fact, you can get crushed between, uh, between the missiles and the floor. I had that happen to me many times during my practice run of this. And there we go, we beat up Tinker Knight. Darkness eludes me! Alright, let's go check out some of the new stuff around here. Uh, with Horus' Tower, nothing ever actually changes, and we can kind of see that nothing... I'm always gonna go here first, I think, from now on, because nothing ever changes here, and if something does change here, I would like to see it. Plus, this area is fun! Can't really say that much about Doom and Gloom Spectre Night. Anyway, we can see that people from the Tinker Tower, I think is what it was called, are uh, wandering around uh, about here. Also, I just noticed this. This is my favorite thing ever. The two rats just sitting at the table like, yeah, we're just gonna order a drink here. You thought we were just mindless creatures? No, we're fairly intelligent. Anyway, we come back up here and let's talk to Tinker Knight. And when we do... <laughs> Tools of war can force a kind of peace, but I think our rules should be fair and just. None but fools would break things and not rush to fix them. If you try to talk to him, he just falls over, but he does have a good point. Although, I don't think he has much say in it considering our uh, our benefactor is the Enchantress. We come over here, we can see that the uh, this last this uh, second lantern here has been fixed. You can no longer crack it and turn this uh, knight into anything else. He basically go through, goes through the standards of gold armor and then becomes this dragon knight. Which, by the way, super psyched to see the dragon knight in action. And I don't mean like dragon knight like the Pokemon. Anyway, one last thing we could do over here. We already have all the clothes, so we can't really do anything with that, but we still got red. Oh, my heart grows cold. I have, I have located new curios, but I uh, but have you found me any red skulls? Barrier Lantern. Uh, creates a shield which blocks projectiles to charge up. Ah, this curio is well guarded. I'll lead you there, but you gotta find your own way out. This area is cursed as well. Tread carefully. So what this will do is this will uh, absorb projectiles and even things like the lava. You can see the flames on it are getting bigger. Up to a maximum, you can see. When you hit the attack button, it launches out the fire in, a, in like a fiery explosion. Think of it like having more or less like play, uh, some of Plague Knight's powers just on Spectre Knight, pretty much. It is very useful. It also does damage on contact. So like, if you wanted to just knock this guy off, off here, you can just shoot the fire at him. Also, it protects you indefinitely from what I've been able to tell. And I don't think it ever runs out unless you hit something with it. Well, yeah, just use that, get him. It would have been nice to get that treasure, but whatever. We can just jump across and get the get this up, get that mouse off of there, and we go back to red. Excellent! Away we go! What? How big is his, like, closet of red skulls? That curio is no mere bubble. Use it wisely. And unfortunately, he doesn't have anything else for us. But we can go back up to that one area near the, uh, the, uh, mem uh, yeah, Menek. Memek? Memek. It's a Memek, not a Memek. And the, the Dragon Knight to get ourselves a new upgrade for the Barrier Lantern. Becomes more powerful when fully charged. I'll have to test that at some point because I can't go anywhere to use that quite yet. But it now has uh, Purple Fire instead, so apparently it'll do more damage once it's fully charged. Uh, oh, actually! Hitting it against this is enough to charge it up, so that's pretty neat anyway. But it's still the same, like... Large purple fire. Let me see if I can hit something with it that'll uh, that'll cause it to explode. Oh man, they launch into like these firebirds. That's awesome. But anyway, I'm thinking that's it. Next time on Shovel Knight Specter of Shadows, we're gonna be heading off to the flying machine to take on Propeller Knight. I haven't played this far yet, but I get the feeling the Phantom Striker is more or less plot relevant. Anyway, see you all then. Later!